Another large voting block in Midwestern states, like Michigan, are the union workers. Union leaders leaning Democratic, but how do their members feel? Mark Mix, president of the National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation, joins us to assess. Mark Mix, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks. We're excited to have you, Mark. Yeah. But we're going to talk about Americans' attitudes uh, toward unions. The approval of, of attitudes appears, according to a Gallup poll, appears to be favorable. 61% uh, of those surveyed say that uh, unions help the United States economy. However, union membership has been at a steady decline. Why is that? Where's yeah. the schism? Yeah, no, it's an interesting question and one that is important. You know, Gallup does a poll every year probably in the summer about favorability of unions. And they have reached an apex. I mean, I think two years ago it was 71%. But no one reports on the second question, Steve, and that is how interested are you in joining a union? You may have a favorable opinion, but only 11% of the workers surveyed by that same Gallup poll that showed 71% approval said they had any interest at all in joining a union. And a large majority said, you know what? We don't think it's necessary anymore. Because here's what's happened. Employers have gotten a lot more sophisticated with the shortage of labor. Um, certainly, you know, people are looking all over the country for people to come to work for them. And if you're not taking care of your employees, they will go someplace else or you won't get them. So the idea of forced unionization, compulsory unionization, is an antique. It's a dinosaur. And unions have to change with that. But they haven't. So the, the growth rate in jobs has increased. And the union density, to your point, Steve, has decreased down to just 6% of the private sector workforce. And I think one of the reasons is because the difference between union officials and rank and file workers is growing wider and wider all the time, particularly on a political front. I mean, you have a whole host of, of rank and file workers who believe in you know, secure borders and smaller government and lower taxes and less regulation. But you have the union officials here in Washington, DC, promoting candidates and ideas that dramatically expand government power and, and break, um, break down those institutions that most rank and file workers support. Why do you think this, there's a schism between unions in terms of political parties? And how will unions play into specifically the Michigan uh, primary? that's approaching tonight. The United Auto Workers Union, obviously, uh, about three weeks ago, I guess, were here in Washington, and the 14-member executive committee decided they were going to endorse Joe Biden for the presidential race, in the presidential race. Interestingly enough, the president of the United Auto Workers, Sean Fain, showed up on television shortly after that endorsement, and he said this, and I'm, it's almost a verbatim quote, Steve. He said, quote, let me be clear, the great majority of our members are not going to vote for Joe Biden. They're going to vote their paychecks. Now, that was kind of one of those open your eyes stunner when he literally announces something out loud that he wasn't supposed to say. But if you go back and you look at an NBC poll from January, it said that Donald, comparing Donald Trump to Joe Biden on management of the economy and management of your, uh, your paycheck, Trump wins overwhelmingly from a broad base by 22, 23% of the people saying he's better positioned and better, uh, in a better position to, to help us with our economic issues. So what Sean Fain said was a great majority of our members are not going to be voting for Joe Biden, despite the fact they endorsed him for president. They're going to spend literally millions of dollars to get him elected. Let's get to Sean O'Brien. Sean O'Brien's the new Teamster president, and he ran on this kind of transparency issue. And he decided that basically they need to continue to play footsies with the Republicans because he knows that a large majority of the Teamsters across the country are on board with the Trump agenda that won the presidency in 2016 in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in uh, Indiana, in Ohio, and Pennsylvania, that states that Trump won. He knows that he's got to play to that, those people because the political efforts of the Teamsters, I think ultimately they will endorse Joe Biden. They will do that. And $45,000, as my grandma used to say, she used to have this little pin money, she called it. It was in a little can. And, and $45,000 in politics today, Steve, is pin money. It went to the convention fund. Um, no one's reporting except you and, and us today that an additional three times amount, that same amount of money went to the Democrat convention fund, a Democratic political action committee, all in the same, basically the same day. So it's a big story that the Teamsters gave any money to, to the Republican Party, but it's not really that big of a story when you look at it in context. How do you think Biden's push for e EVs uh, settle with the UAW rank and file? Yeah, the CEO of Ford and others have indicated that it takes 40% less labor to produce an electric vehicle. So if you're a UAW member and you only, actually you're only about 48% of the UAW membership now because the 380,000 UAW members, about more than half are healthcare professionals and graduate students out in the California State University system. I think GM has as many UAW members as the California State University system. Um, so the, the dichotomy of, of the membership of the UAW is, is drifting to the left 
through its academic exposure. But the automobile manufacturers, if you're looking at it as a UAW member and you say, hey, if we continue on this path and support Joe Biden and he gets reelected and they push this EV thing, look around because four out of 10 of us are gonna be out of work by the time they implement that. So I think there's a big disconnect. And I think the fact that Biden has basically indicated through the media that he's drawing back on it is an indication there's a political point here. And unfortunately, Steve, we know that everything in Washington ends up having a political point. Mark Mix, really appreciate you joining us. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.